Tantra is as old as the Vedas. Based on the ideas and concepts told in Vedas, Vedic astrology is made over that, which have multiple streams. In the same way, based on the ideas propounded in Tantra, there is Tantric astrology. Vedic astrology have uh, many branches, more than seven, but unfortunately today we see all of them as a singular branch. This is the major reason we are failing in our predictions. As I see my contemporary astrologers, my dear friends, I find that uh, they are more into predicting about the nature, behavior, character of the person and about their uh, family relatives, etc. What is the you know, likes and dislikes of the native? Are they happy or not happy? But in my humble opinion, this is not a prediction, actually. Prediction is to look at future and uh, find out what is going to happen in future in the coming times and predicting the people to get prepared for it accordingly and also suggest the remedies which can be taken. Unfortunately, nowadays, the knowledge of remedies are also very, very limited and people uh, recommend remedies without actually having any spiritual lineage or having any formal training in remedies, which actually brings bad name to astrology as the remedies that are not authenticated by parampara and remedies which are uh, logic based, for an example, you know, like the Lalakita based remedies actually don't work, which bring a bad name to astrology as well as the other Vedic science. This is a very bad thing that have happened. Out of uh, Tantric astrology, there is one very popular stream of astrology that I know you are well aware of, that is the Gemini astrology. Gemini astrology is also Tantric astrology. The text of Gemini astrology was written much before the text of Parashara astrology, in my humble opinion. And this particular story that Vyas was the son of uh, Parashar and Gemini was the disciple of Vyas talks of another Gemini and not that Gemini which was the author of Gemini Sutras. However, Gemini Sutras, which according to me was written somewhere uh, 3000 BC ago. After that 3000 BC, we find Gemini text only after 16th century AD. In between from 3000 BC to 16th century AD, there is a time when there was no major work on Gemini astrology. This has been the major reason why uh, Gemini astrology is so distorted today. Even the text of Gemini astrology is not completely authentic and there are many chapters which are unauthentic. But astrologers, because they don't possess the knowledge that the parampara gives them, neither they have good uh, knowledge of Sanskrit. They are mere translators and uh, there are many nowadays who are considered as very famous astrologers who have a, a strong following, but they know not even S of Sanskrit. The text written after 16th century on Gemini astrology, if you read them, you find them that they have nothing to do with the real Gemini astrology. They abruptly ignore a lot of things which Gemini, uh, uh, the Gemini Rishi propagated. And in turn, they result into a type of astrology which is not Gemini astrology at all, which comes with many such fundas such as, you know, the Dasha of the Vimishatri Dasha of Atmakarak is bad. The Vimishatri Dasha of Darkarak can get you married. These things are quite absurd. You know, it is a mixing of two systems in turn to make a third system, uh, which is uh, somehow is like, you know, trying to mix... Uh, the samosa and jalebi into one to make something which is not edible at all. Right? So, not only this, uh, not only Gemini astrology as the traditional astrology have more than seven streams into it, which is now seen as one. Tantric astrology also have many streams into it. And I have a forthcoming course by the name of the Tantra Method of Prediction in which I am going to, after doing a English and Hindi batch of um, a long course on Gemini Sutras or on the system of Je or, or, or on the system of astrology that was propagated by Gemini. Now I am going to do a exclusive course on one of the streams of Tantric astrology, where I will deal with a lot of topics. The biggest highlight of this course 
is a complete system of prediction based on nakshatras. This is not a technique. This is not a research. This is a complete system. You make a horoscope like you make a normal horoscope. And after making that horoscope, you apply the formula of the system. And this leads you to a brand new system never told before as the secrets of Tantra are only passed into a strictly confined Guru Shishya Parampara. And despite being uh, despite being a long time these things these secrets of tantra are not known to common people in the same way this system of tantric astrology is also not known to many specifically those who fake the parampara they belong to or those who are practicing astrology without properly learning it or even those students who are learning astrology in uh, you know their free time and posing themselves as astrologers certainly don't know about these things as they lack the complete knowledge and the formal training. This particular uh, nakshatra-based system is the major highlight of the course where uh, you make a normal chart and you apply these principles and you land to a new system of astrology which is very much accurate to the point. And once you master this particular technique, it is very easy. Once you master this particular technique, your predictions will go to the next level and your analysis of the horoscope will also be better. This system, in my experience of uh, practicing astrology in more than a decade, is almost infallible and gives you insights which other systems cannot give you. It is more accurate and better than any other system you know, especially any other nakshatra-based system that you know. This is very, very, very brilliant and highly recommended for everyone to learn. Along with this, we are also going to cover a lot of secrets related to names, how names shape the destiny, and what is the importance of name or words while practicing astrology. We are going to cover a lot of secrets related to muhurta, choosing the right and the auspicious time so that people can use it in their lives to be successful in everything. We will cover a lot of secrets related to the Prashna horoscope and we will also include a lot of secrets related to the interpretation of horoscope and making predictions based on that. Specifically, another major highlight of this course are remedies. I don't understand a particular point. Even a basic astrological learner who have learned astrology seriously for even one, two months will frankly accept that the result of planets are different for the same house, for the same Rashi, right? Then how does, how come the result, the remedy is the same? And specifically the remedies that are being recommended now are not that effective. Tantra was, Tantra is main, if you right now want to segregate Tantra and Veda from mainstream Hinduism, you will find that 80% of the practices into Hinduism come from Tantra, right? The thing is, tantric remedies are better, works more effectively, and are good. The thing is, you know, suggesting a normal remedy uh, does not give much result. As a practicing astrologer for around 12 years now, since when I started practicing astrology, I have given people remedies related to tantras and the feedback are astonishing. People have told that it has been life-changing. They have achieved the things which they thought they could never achieve. Things which were unimaginable have happened to them. However, there are so many feedbacks that if I start posting them, it will be a collage. So I save myself from, you know, like pouring out the personal data of the clients. But they have been highly effective over my practice through different horoscopes now more for more than a decade's time. In today's video, I will share some secrets of Tantra astrology related to the basics of astrology. I will talk about special house definitions as given by the Tantra astrology and also deal with some of the prime major remedies also based on Tantra astrology. The first thing that I wish to deal with is the definition of house or rather the signification of house according to the Tantra astrology 
that I am going to teach in my forthcoming course, the Tantra method of prediction. So as per the Tantra astrology, the first house deals about order. The planet in the ascendant and the ascendant lord deals with order. The nature of the planet and the house which the planet lords, who is situated in the ascendant, or the house and the rashi where the ascendant lord is situated, that is your order. Rather, you should say that is the life path. You have to give your 100% related to that life, related to that house, that particular signification. That is the most active area of your chart. So say Ascendant Lord is in the 10th house. Your prime focus have to be profession. Seventh Lord in the Ascendant, your prime focus have to be your marriage or your spouse. And if you don't follow it, your life will be miserable. Also, the planet who is lording the Ascendant or the planet who is situated in the Ascendant, you are ordered to live like that planet. If you don't imbibe the quality of that particular planet in your nature, your life will not be contented and happy. Along with this, the Lagna Lord also indicates the thing which you should avoid. Bad influences on the ascendant or influences which are weakening the ascendant should be strongly avoided if one wants to succeed in life. Specifically, because ascendant indicates the order, it tells you that particular aspect of personality which needs the maximum development. There are, There is more to it, but I am explaining all the houses in a very concise manner right now in this video. Those who want to learn about these uh, significations in depth should join the course. And there I will be teaching it in much, much detail. The second house talks about karma or the desire. The second house indicates the sexuality. Specifically, if you want to judge the sexuality of the native, you should make second house as ascendant and then see the horoscope. Second house not also indicates sexuality, but, but also indicates the desire, something which will always haunt the native. Tantra believes in that one should fulfill their desire in order to get complete freedom, in order to prepare their mind for salvation. Right? So the planet who is situated in the second house and whichever house second lord is situated in, you have maximum desires related to that house and a sexual analysis of the horoscope should be done with respect to the second house. Right? In the course, I will include many examples related to how this works, which will further clarify the idea, which I am not doing right now in this particular video. The third house indicate those things which always come to your rescue, those things which always come to your help. Check the planet in the third house, check where the third lord is situated in. These traits, the things signified by this house and this planet is something that will come to your rescue always. If you want to do the remedy first, if you want to develop a quality first, it should be related to your third house. This is the thing which will help you in your worst times. The fourth house of the horoscope, specifically in the Prashna chart, talks about the outcome of Prashna. If you want to know what will be the result of a question asked, your focus should be on the fourth house. More than your focus is on the ascent. In the natal chart, Fourth house indicates those things in life which will be unfulfilled or incomplete. Also, the fourth lord indicates those things which will remain incomplete and those things which have remained incomplete in the previous life and 
the person in this particular life have to go through major karmas related to the planet in the fourth house or where the fourth lord is situated in specifically the person have to work much into this area and there comes a lot of suffering as well for example if you have rahu in the fourth house many people cheat you teach you lessons because this is something you know like planet in the fourth house is your lingering question <clears throat> if rahu is connected to the fourth house your prime question will be why everyone is jealous of me why everyone is cheating me if saturn is in the fourth house your prime question will be why i am suffering so much why i am not getting the thing which i desire uh, despite doing so much hard work why i am not getting thing which i am you know like which i am eligible for right so this is your ever lingering question and this also indicate the karma that you have left unfulfilled in your previous life and in this particular life you have to complete this particular karma this strongly indicates that coming to the next house fifth house fifth house indicates what things in this earth on this planet is favorable to you this indicate which things help and support you a lot fifth house indicates your friends fifth house indicate your strength and if there is no planet in the fifth house you also check the fifth lord for an example if the fifth lord goes to the 12th house expenditure is the thing which comes as your friend if the fifth lord is connected to the 12th house or the 12th lord comes into the fifth house then you quickly understand that only those people will come to your rescue at the time of problem whom you have given more money than they have deserved on whom you have exorbitantly spent your money right so exorbitantly spending the money is the basic point if you don't do that on people at the time of misery you will be left alone is what is indicated by the fifth house this have to be very strongly seen sixth house indicates the ascent to heaven sixth house indicate those things which will become a hurdle in your progress a hurdle in your success normally we take it as shadripu whereas tantra astrology takes it as those things which actually help you in overcoming all the issues if you positively use these significations and the traits the house where the sixth lord is situated in the planet which is situated in the sixth house you have to master things related to that planet in order to get a improved life be it related to promotion if you are struck anywhere in your life not getting a promotion not getting the desired life not only much money imbibe the qualities of the planet situated in the 6th house do remedies related to the planet situated in the 6th house and you will start getting those results which are struck the 7th house indicate those things which you have to sacrifice in order to succeed Seventh house indicates those things which you have to leave in order to succeed. Seventh house indicates those things which are taken away from you. Hence, you have to be careful about it. If someone is having Saturn in the seventh house, they will do a lot in their professional life only to find out that someone have taken the. cream of their hard work if there is jupiter in the 7th house then they will know all their name fame status and everything that they have done is being utilized by someone else who is an authoritative the the cream of their hard work is specifically related to knowledge and research this is what jupiter indicates is actually someone else is taking profit of it over them this is a this is the prediction which i will make there are as i have already told you there are many more hidden significations related to these particular houses which i will be teaching in depth into the course it will be teaching you those things which you have never imagined tantra is something that is far beyond the expectation far beyond anything that you can even imagine or think 
Now coming to the eighth house, it indicates what you leave. It indicates the quality and traits that you leave for your children. It indicates those good or bad things which your children get from you, which they imbibe from you. This indicates what you leave for your future generations. See, as I have like repeatedly told, I am telling it for the third time. For the YouTube viewers, I think that they are intelligent enough to decode from a single one-liner that I am telling. If you want me to decode it, that I am going to do into the codes. The thing is, Tantra indicates the mechanism, how things are done. Doing something is karma. So Tantra horoscope is a karma horoscope. Right? For a particular example, Swami Ramakrishna Paramahans is having his eighth lord in the ascendant with sun and with moon. What Ramakrishna Paramahans left to his lineage is to ascend it, so that people aspire to become like him. He is conjoined with moon and he is conjoined with sun. Right? So how egoless he was, how humble he was from sun. And his mental frame and attitude of a child towards the goddess and of purity towards woman is what his followers imbibe. This is how it has to be seen. It does not only work in his horoscope, but work in everyone's horoscope. The ninth house indicate the three qualities. Out of the three qualities of Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, which quality will be dominant in you? That is indicated by the ninth house. When there is a weak planet, you have the excess of the negativity of negative quality of that planet, which you have to consciously reduce. And when there are powerful planets, you have the good quality of that particular element. Sun, moon, Jupiter indicates Sattva. Mercury, Venus indicates Rajas and Saturn, Mars, Rahu, Ketu indicates Tamas. In a particular horoscope where Rahu is in the ninth house, the person have a lot of Tamas. Tamas is what? Ignorance. Doing thing for the sake of revenge. Uh, thinking bad of people, getting jealous. All these things are indicated by Tamas. This is the quality which have made the life of the person worse. We should advise him to not be into these things. And if they listen to our advice, their life will improve for better. This is what the Tantra horoscope tells us. In the horoscope of Ramakrishna Paramahans, ninth house is having an exalted Saturn, which indicates he was having no negativity of Tamasguna. Laziness he was not having. Thinking bad of people he was not having. Getting jealous from people he was not having. Criticizing others he was not having. Right? Uh, doing things for the sake of revenge. He never did that. That is indicated by the Tamasic planet Saturn getting exalted in the ninth house. This is how the analysis needs to be done. The tenth house indicates the crux. Tenth house is the crux of the horoscope. And uh, if there is no planet, then you see the house lot. Tenth house indicates the crux of the horoscope. It indicates what is the crux of this particular life, rather you say mission. For example, Swami Ramakrishna Paramahans is having Ketu in the tenth house and the tenth lord Mars is situated in the twelfth house. Clearly indicating that the essence of his life was to show people the path of freedom, the path of detachment, the path of spirituality. Right? Anything who have the 10th Lord connected to the 12th house, their, the essence of their life is to make people aware to get rid of unnecessary things, useless things, bad things, and make a clear path to truth, happiness, 
and success. Anyone who have this particular combination have to work into this particular area. See how astrology helps you. This is my standard answer. You are not going to become an IPS. You will understand at the age of 35. But by that time, you will be ineligible for many other jobs. What if I tell you at the age of 22 itself that you are not going to become an IAS IPS, but you should try for some other job, say SHO kind of a job. Then you can save your hard work, you can save your life and you can get settled early. As compared to the previous case, when after the age of 35, when the person finds out that he cannot be an IES, IPS, he will have no option left in his life. Not many good options. So the same thing. Using astrology, we find out what is best for the person. We advise them the same thing. And following our advice, people get success early. As they get success early, they have more chances to enjoy the life and make their life better. The 11th house indicates the surprise, miseries, mishaps, and misfortune that lands on us. Same is the planet in the 11th house. You are very unfortunate in the matters of that planet which is situated in the 11th house. This will sound very strange, but this is Tantra astrology. This is not the normal astrology. And the taste of the cake lies in its eating. You apply it on the horoscopes. Whichever planet is in your 11th house, you will face much difficulty related to the significations of that planet. Also, the house where the 11th Lord is situated in, you will face much difficulty and much negative results related to that particular house. Even if the 11th Lord is making a Dhani Yoga, this will be the same, right? The Dhani Yogas in Tantric Astrology are different. You have to understand it. For an example, in the horoscope of Swami Ramakrishna Paramahans, 11th Lord Jupiter is situated in the 5th house. 11th Lord being situated in the 5th house, first of all, he, he didn't have a children. He haven't had a children because he was an ascetic. But for a normal person, if he wished to have a child, there must have been problems. Also, because of 5th house, 11th Lord being in the 5th house, it is noted in Ramakrishna Vachanamrata that Thakur Ramakrishna Paramahans used to go at the roof of his, of the Kali temple and used to cry in front of mother, used to shout that I want to share my knowledge with students. Oh great mother, please send me followers. Right, so fifth house, which indicates followers, came very late for him, and he was very desperate to share his ideas with people, etc., indicating the problems that you have to face. Right, and the twelfth house indicates about death, the death conditions, how the person dies, the places surrounding his death. See, now in traditional astrology, you see the Marak house, second house, and seventh house, but you will see. See, many people have like also told it because 12th house is the house of this, that. Maximum at the time of death, you will see an involvement of the 12th house lord or the planet in the 12th house in the death matters. People have tried to establish it using logic. That is nothing wrong. But this comes from Tantra astrology, which explicitly tells us that the death condition when the person will die, etc., is strongly related to the 12th house. For example, Thakur Ramakrishna Paramahans is having Mars in the 12th house, which indicates he is dying from a very deadly disease, cancer. Right? He died of a very deadly disease, cancer, and the 12th lord was in the 9th house. That was also strong. Ninth house indicate Guru. When he died, he was a Guru figure and many of his students were around him. 
and he also died in a temple. Ninth house indicates temple. Ninth house indicates city. So twelfth house indicates death condition also and have a strong bearing on death or anything that destroys in your life. Anything that ends in your life is controlled by the twelfth house. This is what the tantra astrology tells us. Now, because I have told of these houses and I'm pretty sure that you will be able to make predictions out of it or at least able to understand the houses in a new perspective. I should also tell you the remedies that you should be doing, the which remedy you should do to get good result related to a house or rather pacify malefic influence related to a particular house, right? This is what I am going to tell you now. I'll just tell you the name of the planet. And by the end of this, I will especially share with you the mantra of planets as per the tantric text, as per the tantric tradition. And these are not the normal, you know, this normal tantric mantra for Saturn, Pram, Prim, Prom, Saha, Sanayana, Maha. These mantras are not the actual tantric mantras. These tantric mantras are from those tantrics, it seems, who claim to get your girlfriend back in 10 minutes through a shikaran, etc. The real tantric mantras are different, which I have taught in my recent course on Sarvato Bhadra in a nutshell. And in this tantra course, I am going to teach it in detail. Not mantra-based remedy, but other tantra-based remedy are other tantra-based remedy based on the astrological combinations, based on the name of the native and based on the other panchang factors and astronom astronomical astrological factors, remedies which are very effective and have been found working miraculously over more than a decade of my astrological experience will be taught in the course. One special complete class of around two, two and a half hour is planned on this topic. One special complete class of two, two and a half hour is planned on the topic of the nakshatra prediction system that I have talked about. This is a course of total five classes starting from 6th of June. Classes it starts from Monday. Now, for issues related to first house and eighth house, Venus related remedy needs to be done. The problem related to second house and ninth house, Saturn related remedy needs to be done. Problem related to third house and tenth house, one should do sun related remedy. Problem related to 4th house and 11th house, one should do moon related remedy. Problem related to 5th house and 12th house, one should do Mars related remedy. And problem related to 6th house, one should do Mercury related remedy. I will give you an example. One of my client was not having a child since long. In last seven, seven and a half years, his wife have gone through 11, 12 miscarriages, but he was not having a child. It was a fifth house issue. The fifth Lord was going into the fourth house and was further getting afflicted. Now fifth house, you have to do remedy related to Mars. Mars is the son of mother goddess earth. According to some stories, Mars was born out of the relationship between mother goddess earth and Vishnu and uh, another story tells it is because of the sweat of Shiva. Abhilasha have made a video on this which you must see. I will put the description of the video in the link. I will put the link of the video in the description. Now, because he was not having a child, I told him to go to a Guru's temple, a temple which is dedicated to Guru. 
from the garden of the temple take some soil put it into a silver vessel cover it up by a by like by a silver plate or something like that and keep it into your into the your place of worship imagining this as the embodiment of embodiment of the guru and the pot the kalash is considered as an embodiment of vishnu in worship the kalash the pot is worshiped as vishnu right i think this is this is a common fact but still many people will not know this kalash is vishnu basically it is varun but it it is it is sometimes taken as varun but primarily it is vishnu only now varun is not worshiped so vishnu is consider that pot as vishnu the soil kept under it as your guru and worship it and this have given him child after this long you know wait of this long years and after these many abortions gave him a child in one and a half year why because when it is the problem related to fifth house you have to do remedy related to mars now you cannot do this particular remedy for child closing your eyes as i have already told you if the result for planet in a house is different then why the remedy for the planet have to be same for every horoscope right so specialized remedies based on combinations and other astrological factors will be taught in the course now coming to the tantric mantra for planets what you should do is you should do one mala chanting of these mantras every day starting from the day of the planet for whom you are doing the mantra once you do the mantra for continuously 40 days you will start getting the result however if the problem is bigger then it can also take 120 days but you will start feeling the result in 120 days or 40 days according to the problem for sure you continue doing these mantras for one year and a great relief will be felt by you the tantric mantra for sun is om hram hrim sah the tantric mantra for moon is om swam somaya namaha the tantric mantra for mars is om ham hamsa kham kha the tantric mantra for mercury is om dram dream drom sah the tantric mantra for jupiter is om brim brihaspatiye namaha the tantric mantra for venus is om vastram me dehi shukraya swaha the tantric mantra for saturn is om kram kreem krum sah the tantric mantra for rahu is om bhram hrim prom sah the tantric mantra for ketu is om pram prim prom sah these are the tantric mantras for the planets the pronunciation have to be done the same way as i have done right now i pronounced it so that it becomes easy for you right so uh there are many more remedies there are specialized mantras for planet in every house right as i have already told you you cannot do the same remedy always right and tantra astrology is something which is not known to like many of the people in the world at least i can certainly say that 99% of the astrologers don't know about the thing that i am going to teach in the webinar if you are very serious about learning astrology if you really want to learn it see it is not like you only want to use it for professional purpose even if you want to use it for your betterment even if you want to use it for your close family and friends only that's not the issue the purpose is not the thing the thing is you want to seriously learn it like a pro then this course is highly recommended 